has begun to thaw. Ice is out in the first part. There's a little bit of ice left over here, but in no time, the frogs will be thawing. Yes, I said thawing. Frogs actually freeze solid for the winter. Of those, we have a gray green tree frog, um, spring peeper, and the wood frog as some examples. And uh, God's actually given them a natural antifreeze in their blood so that when they freeze, um, they can just thaw again in the spring. It's an amazing miracle that happens every year, and uh, we'll be hearing them calling soon enough. Wow, this may just look like a boring puddle. It's actually really important and called a vernal pool. It's a seasonal puddle that dries up later in the summer and fall, and this is really important for amphibians like frogs and salamanders, which depend on it for a safe place to lay their eggs so they don't get eaten by fish like in the rivers and lakes. Hi, and we're back here at the Fairhaven's wetland, and today the chorus frogs are really loud, and they sound just like running your fingers on a comb. Some of these frogs can even be heard right in the ditches along the side of the road. They were really hard to sneak up on in this video, but you can certainly hear them. The coarse frogs are between two and four centimeters in length. They're light brown with a few dark, sometimes broken stripes down their back. They also have a white line on their upper lip and a dark stripe along the side of their body from the tip of their snout down to their groin. So off to your right here, you can hear a peeping. That is the spring peeper. They're named after their peeping sound. Don't know what else to say about that. And uh, you can recognize them by the X on their back. See the photo here. That's an easy way to tell the difference between them and the chorus frogs. Both the spring peeper and chorus frog are only about the size of a toonie. All right, we are about to go across the road to the wetland and uh, hear the peepers in full chorus. Are you ready? There, notice how as it swims you can really see that X or cross on the back of the spring peeper. That's really distinctive of this species. They'll be light brown and tan in color. They're also two to three and a half centimeters in length. And they'll also have little toe suction cups if you see them up close. Yep, the spring peeper literally sounds like its name. It's a short and high-pitched peep. That's it, pretty easy to remember that one. Here's the sound of the wood frog a little bit closer. Yeah, so notice how it sounds like that rolling quacking sound, kind of like a duck. The wood frog is well named because people often find them in the woods or in the forest. They're brown to tan in color, three and a half to eight centimeters in length, so quite a bit bigger than the spring peeper and chorus frog. And the most distinguishing feature is probably this black mask on either side of their face. They also have a lighter white line on their upper lip or their upper jaw. Um, they do have this line or fold of skin along their back, which is distinctive. 
All right, it is May 14th and we are back at the Fairhaven's wetland. And as you can see behind me, the wetland is getting a little bit greener. Did you know that frogs and toads actually breathe through their skin? What, that's crazy. This is why we call them an indicator species because they are sensitive to pollution and other changes in the environment and they can tell us how healthy the environment is. That's really important. Because amphibians breathe through their skin, it's important that you don't ever pick them up with chemicals on your hands like bug spray, hand sanitizer, or sunscreen. Hello and welcome back to the wetland. Uh, tonight we're going to be exploring a new sound that I've been hearing from all the way back over at Fairhavens. And um, I did come prepared with a bug net since it's a little bit buggier now, end of May. So let's go a bit closer and see what we find. When I was younger, I used to mistake their calls for birds, raccoons, or squirrels up in a tree. So that's an easy way to remember it. On their toes, they have these big suction cups, so they're good at climbing, that's for sure. And they're really distinctive from other frogs because of the really camouflaged and mottled pattern on their back. They can also go from bright green to dull gray, so they're really good at camouflaging and don't let the color fool you. Something new that I saw on the tree frogs which I had never seen before up close, is this little patch of yellow uh, by kind of the frog's armpit. So that's another distinguishing feature, but you've got to be a lot closer to actually see it. Here's a cool photo of a gray tree frog my family found while hiking in early spring. We thought it was dead at first since it wasn't moving and it was a strange blue color, but then we noticed that the parts of its body exposed to the sun were different colors than the parts that were hidden by leaves. That's when I remembered reading about how God gave frogs the ability to freeze over winter. So, we tucked him off to the side of the trail by a log, to thaw in peace, and to hop another day. Oh, I wish you could see this on camera right now. These stars tonight are beautiful. It's a great view from the Pond Study platforms. Not much light pollution on this side of the highway. Hey look, anybody recognize what this creature is? Yep, it's an American toad definitely famous for all of its warts on its back. It also has two of those big glands about right behind its eyes. Toads will only live in ponds and wetlands during the breeding season, and once they're born of course. Other than that, they like to hang out on land a lot more than other frogs do. And on the way back to Fair Glen, by the Gulf Course Bridge, there's some high-pitched trilling or high-pitched screams going on over by the culvert under the highway. Yep, that's right, that is the toad. This past spring at Fair Glen, we actually had the opportunity to monitor what frogs we found in our wetland. Shout out to Blazing Star Environmental, Trent University, and the Canadian Wildlife Service for making this research opportunity possible. And this opportunity is available for anybody interested in counting and listening to frogs. It's that simple. Only takes about five minutes of commitment, a few times in April and May. And if you're interested in joining for next spring, contact info at blazingstar.ca. All right, now let's take a look at some of the other frogs in a little bit more detail. All right, the next two frogs we're gonna look at are the leopard frog and the pickerel frog. Visually, the easiest way to tell the two apart is that the leopard frog spots are kind of all over the place, all sorts of shapes and sizes, and the color of this frog is brown to green in color, whereas the pickerel frog is light cream colored to brown, um, and its spots are a lot more organized in two neat rows and are a little bit more boxed or squared off in the corners. The pickerel frog has a long, drawn out, nasally snore for a sound. That's what the pickerel frog sounds like. The leopard frog also has a nasally snore type sound, but it's also followed by some chuckling or grunting sounds. This can also sound like you rubbing a wet finger along a balloon. The 
bullfrog is the biggest frog in Ontario, and it sounds like this. A really low, deep jogarum, jogarum, jogarum kind of sound. Not only is this frog the biggest and has the deepest call, but it's also a bully type frog. Get it? Bully? It actually eats other frogs. Yikes! The dorsolateral ridge is this line of skin along the frog's back. Dorso means back and lateral means side, so it makes sense. The bullfrog does not have one of these lines, whereas the green frog does. That's one of the easiest ways to tell the difference between the two. This is what the green frog sounds like. A barking sound, or kind of like the sound of a loose banjo string. That's an easy way to remember this one. The mink frog and green frog can often be confused since they both have black spots on their back and both have a bright green lip. The best way to tell the two apart is that the green frog is bigger and has these dark black bands on its leg, whereas the mink frog does not. Another difference is that the green frog has that dorsolateral fold that we talked about earlier, whereas the mink frog only has a partial lateral fold. It doesn't extend all the way down its back. Mink frog refers to its pungent and musky odor. This is what the mink frog sounds like. And the way that you can remember their call is that it sounds like somebody's hammering on wood far off in the distance. Hey, I hear a mink frog. Your educational resource for the day is a website called Frog Watch, where you can go to listen to what the frogs sound like and learn more about them. If you're out and about and see or hear a frog that you can't really remember what it is, then you can use your phone to take an audio recording of the sound or also take a picture and post it to the Citizen Science app or website called iNaturalist. This is a great resource not only for helping you identify what you find, but also for contributing to science and conservation around your area. Now for our faith application. While I don't know what the frogs are saying to each other, it is cool to be able to tell them apart just by the way they sound. Isn't it neat how God understands our prayers in every language, no matter where we are in the world? In the second book of the Bible, called Exodus, God actually used frogs to help free the people of Israel from Egyptian slavery. Wow, if God can use frogs for epic events like that, how much more do you think he can use each one of us to do good and to bring new hope to the people around us? And I'm all the way over by Fairhaven's office, and I can still hear the spring peepers. Wow, they are loud. Thanks for joining us today for our outdoor creation experience.